These moments were crazy. Hey guys, it's Phoebe from Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 WTF moments in music of the 2010s. And star spangled banner yet We're taking a look at the weirdest moments in the music industry between 2010 and 2019. Let's get to it. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10. 21 Savage turns out to be British. You don't have to know who 21 Savage is to find this first entry on our list strange. The Grammy-nominated rapper, who calls Atlanta, Georgia home, was revealed to be a British citizen after he was arrested by ICE officials on February 3rd, 2019. They tell you you're under arrest? No, nah, they, they didn't say nothing. They just said, we got Savage. They said, we got Savage. The operation was reportedly planned in advance and not the result of Savage's chart success or fame. An ICE spokesperson cited Savage's expired visa and a 2014 felony conviction for drug charges. Still, the man born Shea bin Abraham Joseph and his attorney complained that he'd been singled out in order to send a message. 21 Savage had filed for a new visa in 2017 and as of writing, the case was still pending. Number 9. Weezer Covers Toto It isn't often that an album comprised entirely of covers cracks the Billboard charts, never mind scoring a number one hit. That's what makes Weezer's take on Toto's classic Africa such a strange success. For starters, the cover was inspired by a fan campaign instigated by a 14-year-old fan. Clearly, this kid knows what sells, because its popularity was arguably the driving force behind the team album's sales. Weezer didn't rest on their cover song Laurels for long, however, and released a full-length album of new material only three months later, The Black Album. Number 8. Takashi 6 ix Legal Troubles Also known as SoundCloud rap, mumble rap was a new genre that emerged in the 2010s, a sound that tossed out the rulebook of mainstream hip-hop lyricism in favor of hazy beats and mumbled vocals. One star of the medium was Takashi69, who quickly became known just as much for his confrontational persona as his music. Listen, matter of fact, I'm gonna just get your address. I know where you at. Don't worry about it. You hear me? 6 9 had numerous run-ins with the law throughout the decade. He pled guilty to using a child in a sexual performance in 2015 and in 2019 to weapons, drugs, and racketeering charges. He ended up serving as the prosecution's star witness against his former associates in the Nine Trey Gangsta Bloods. His sentencing is scheduled for January of 2020. Number 7. The Meteoric Rise of Gangnam Style In case you've been living under a rock, K-pop is big business. Today, pop groups from South Korea are hard at work breaking through in North America, with the sales of artists like BTS and EXO already doing gangbusters across Asia, Europe, and the US. However, for many people, their first experience of K-pop was actually Psy's 2012 mega-hit Gangnam Style and its viral music video. The song was the first YouTube clip to reach 1 billion views, and has been played at pretty much every wedding since. Okay, this is everyone I could think of who would want to mess with my life. Perps, people I've testified against, the old guy who lived underneath me when I was learning the Gangnam Style dance. Wow, you pissed off a lot of people. Number 6. No thank you to you too. Here's a question. Do you like free music? Well, how about if that free music is added to your digital library without your consent? This is what Apple customers dealt with in 2014 when they woke up to find U2's unlucky 13th studio album dumped unceremoniously into their iTunes library. Sure, there were plenty of people who were more than happy to give this latest U2 effort a spin, but there were also just as many who felt that the album drop was a poor taste violation of their privacy and personal music taste. Ultimately, the stunt blew up in the band's collective face more than it helped them. But hey, at least they almost apologized on The Graham Norton Show. Why would anyone want another U2 album? We kind of asked ourselves that question. And, um, no, 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 poor U2! Who has worse luck than U2? <laughs> Number 5. Macklemore and Ryan Lewis Stun Kendrick Lamar 
The Grammys have something of a reputation for being out of touch. Like that time Jethro Tull beat out Metallica for Best Heavy Metal Performance in 1989. A similar such theft occurred in 2014 when Macklemore and Ryan Lewis won Best New Artist, Best Rap Album, Best Rap Performance, and Best Rap Song over Kendrick Lamar. Many were stunned at this upset, not the least of whom was Macklemore himself, who messaged Lamar saying, It's weird and it sucks that I robbed you. Some saw it as genuine, others felt it was cheap, especially him posting the screenshot on Instagram. But let's not lose sight of what matters here, just how badly the Recording Academy got it wrong. Number 4. The Self-Destruction of Robin Thicke Robin Thicke seemed to be flying high in 2013 with his Blurred Lines full-length album and single Rising Up the Charts, despite its controversial lyrical content. Thicke garnered further mainstream attention alongside a twerking Miley Cyrus at the 2013 MTV Video Music Awards, then it all seemed to get a bit pear-shaped. Accusations of infidelity and drug abuse resulted in the implosion of his marriage to childhood sweetheart Paula Patton, with his audience turning on him as ever more damning evidence began to leak out concerning Thicke's behavior. Not even a concept album titled Paula could win Patton back. Number 3. Tupac the Hologram The debate is ongoing when it comes to CGI and hologram representation of deceased actors and musicians, and this next entry on our list serves as one of the decade's most questionable. Snoop Dogg's performance at Coachella 2012 featured the hip-hop legend on stage with another rap icon, Tupac Shakur, who appeared as a hologram for a couple of songs. Reactions were mixed, some praising the technology while others felt that dearly departed celebrities should not be raised from the dead for a concert. MTV's James Montgomery even wrote that musicians might have to include non-hologram causes in their wills to avoid post-mortem exploitation. Number 2. Kanye West and Donald Trump We simply don't have enough time to properly discuss every WTF Kanye West moment of the last decade. The undeniably talented rapper has made headlines for a number of reasons, not the least of which was a controversial 2018 statement that said in part that 400 years of slavery sounds like a choice. When you hear about slavery for 400 years, for 400 years, that sounds like a choice. Although West later explained that he was speaking more in a mental and metaphysical sense, there was no ambiguity to his vocal and often rambling support of Donald Trump. This right here is the iPlane 1. It's a hydrogen-powered uh, airplane, and this is what our president should be flying in. Look at this year. The move has been a polarizing one, to say the least. In 2018, West met with the president at the White House, launching into a 10-minute rant that seemed to leave even Trump speechless. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Fire Festival It's been the subject of multiple documentaries, news stories, and a whole lot of outrage. It was the Fire Festival, a luxury island music fest that never actually happened. It was just this mass big crew of local workers. Billy paid them off and then Billy was like, you know, we need more guys. We need more workers. Billy McFarland defrauded investors, vendors, and attendees alike when Firefest went bust, inconveniencing just about everyone with broken promises and empty wallets. Turn around, turn this bus right around. Rapper Ja Rule co-organized the experience, which saw those unfortunate enough to be on the island of Great Exuma Bahamas basically stranded without so much as basic amenities, including sanitary and food services. In a word, Fire Festival was a complete disaster, the kind of utter chaos that can only occur once in a decade. And get him to clear all of the containers with water, you will save this festival. And I literally drove home, took a shower, I, 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 I drank some mouthwash, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm really, and I got into my car to drive across the island to take one for the team. Honestly, you gotta appreciate the audacity of Billy McFarland. <laughs> what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments or tweet me at Phoebe underscore WM. If you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.